It's kind of like in a dating profile when someone says, no hookups. Mm -hmm. That doesn't invite people who don't want to hook up. All it does is show your scars. Mm. It says, this has been my problem in the past and I'm now telegraphing it to the world. So you're telegraphing all of your insecurities right off the bat. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie. And yes, we're back again with another video that features Matthew Hussey, but it's from the Dr. Phil show. And this is a woman who has been ghosted multiple times. Also, I just wanted to say this video is brought to you by my Patreon, um, but I'll talk about that more in a little bit. Let's get into it. Bricklin says he ghosted Brittany because of her trust issues. Have another one of her ghosts joining us on the phone today. He wants to remain anonymous which I respect. Uh, so are you there? Hey, Doc, I'm here. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. So how yeah. many times did you uh, date Brittany? It was brief. We met uh, one time at a party. You know what I'm saying? That was like a little kickback at you know, one of a mutual friend's house. And uh, we hung out for a little bit at the party. And um, after that, we texted for a while. And um, it kind of just ended shortly after that. We didn't really do dates and, you know, get to that point. Yeah. You said her text messages were a red flag to you. What, what was the problem? Oh, man, it was, it was like a number of them, Doc. Like, um, oh it was kind of like the back-to-back -back text messaging before I can even respond to one. Um, and it just seemed like it was like a lot of pressure <laughs> being put in those text messages initially. Right. So you felt she was a little aggressive? Very much so. Very much so. <laughs> right. So what words of advice would you have for her since you're, I mean, just being honest, you're not going to see her again. She's not going to see you. If you were just trying. So, yeah. So this woman, basically, she's been ghosted a ton. And that guy that's on the stage right now, he ghosted her too. So Dr. Phil is bringing in all these different dudes who ghosted this one woman, which she's brave for this because I don't know how many people could stand up there and admit how much they've been ghosted. But it seems like her behavior is very neurotic that she really gets into a man fast. And it's a red flag. And honestly, it is. When you are like the texting back to back, that right there, that is a no go. Like you need to mirror what you are receiving. And I think desperation comes off really, you know, a lot of people say, well, I'm eager and I'm trying to do it with a purpose and I'm trying to get to the point. And that may sound good to you because you know, of how you are, but it does not work for most people, um, especially healthy. And it does seem like, uh, if you guys don't know about attachment styles, it seems like she has a very anxious attachment style. She's not very secure within herself. Um, I know this because I have, I developed an anxious attachment style over the years and I've actually had to do a lot of work so that I'm not so anxious, especially if you like somebody, if you're really into somebody or you really, I'm just anxious in general. So <laughs> it comes out in a lot of ways and I've had to learn to calm down, take it easy and to mirror what is going on. Trying to like be a brother and give her advice to help her. What would it be? Um, I would honestly say, you know, Brittany, um, I think, you know, you are a good looking young woman. You know, you do have, from what I've, you know, seen, you have a good head on your shoulders. I would say as we, as young people, we kind of have this vision in our head of what things should look like. And we have a timeline of when we should get it. But I think they just live life, like learn people and enjoy them for who they are. And if, you know, the chemistry is there, it's there. Yeah. That's a That's, that's pretty good advice. What do you think about what he's saying? It's really good advice, yes. I wish he would follow his own advice. Let me get some other advice and input here. I don't agree with him. I don't think women can do that. I think men can just enjoy life and just kind of let it go. Women do need to date with a purpose. I mean, period. Like, so that's bad advice. Um, that's going to leave her as, you know, oh, you know, past the wall as a cat lady if she's just letting it go, free flowing. There is a way to be purposeful in your dating and not be anxious or over the top or scare people off. But it takes work to get there. A lot of us, we just want, and I know even me, you know, just accept me as I am, but it takes work. Just like a job, just like in school, just with anything, you have to work at it. No, no arena of life are you just accepted as you are. I can't think of one. But when it comes to relationships, we think we should just be 
accept me as I am. I'm going to go with the flow, see how it is. And that's fun, fine and dandy in your early 20s, maybe. But as you age and you want certain things out of life, you're going to have to work towards it. Educate yourself and and get the the self-help, the work that you need done within you so that you can attract a better mate and also work on yourself physically. And right now it just seems like, yeah, that advice that he's saying that that works for guys. Women don't, you can't follow that. Uh, Matthew's joining us. Matthew has, he has the number one YouTube channel in the world for dating and relationship advice for women. His advice reaches over 8 million followers weekly and his YouTube videos have been viewed a few times, 300 million to be exact. He says he's concerned with Brittany's self-worth issues. Matthew, what do you think here? We always have to be aware of the language that we're using. Because mm -hmm. you asked, do you have a girlfriend? Mm -hmm. You also presumably don't want him to be an axe murderer. Mm -hmm. But you don't say, by the way, are you an axe murderer? Right. <laughs> so then why is it that you say that? It's because you've been burnt on that in the past. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with that is you're telegraphing it to the exact person you want to attract. Uh. It's kind of like in a dating profile when someone says, no hookups. Mm -hmm. That doesn't invite people who don't want to hook up. All it does is show your scars. Mm. It says, this has been my problem in the past and I'm now telegraphing it to the world. So you're telegraphing all of your insecurities right off the bat. Here's my concern. You get shown a little interest. Mm -hmm. You know, I, Dr. Phil, I, oh no, Steve Harvey had on his show a woman who had, I mean, it probably was 50 things on a list of things that she didn't want in a man. And I said on that, that when you put those types of things in your profile, when you are demanding things you don't want, you just, you are showing your scars. And he was correct. Before he said it, I was going to say that saying no hookup shows that you've been part of hookup culture, that you have been burned by the hookups. You know, a person who does not hook up doesn't think in that way. Now, unless they're getting a lot of people coming in a direction talking about hookups. But even then, you don't need to say it. You just reject them. You just don't respond. You just filter that out. By, by, but by saying that as well, if you, let's say you put no hookups on your, or your dating profile. Okay, so then guys who may just want to hook up with you, they're not going to present that way. They're going to do, they still want to just hook up. They're not looking for anything more from you, but they're going to finesse it a different way. Those players are going to do that to you or just even regular guys because they can see, all right, I just need to make sure I look like I'm interested in her and more than just a hookup. Maybe I'll even say it. And then that will get her to hook up with me. And then I can just drop it off. You so, so don't play your cards to, you know, you know, don't show your cards. Don't let people know these things. It's a, it's a slow process in getting to know somebody. There's really no, uh, there is a rush in terms of for women, in terms of not wasting years, just running around and, and, and dating a, a bunch of dudes. But the, but when you, when there is somebody, a good potential mate or you're, you you know, have potential people coming your direction. Taking your time to get to know them in the right way is 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 going to actually speed up your process, and it's going to eliminate a lot of foolishness. There's a book called um, Eight Dates. It's by um, oh gosh, I can't even think of his name right now. Um, oh, Gottman, John Gottman. So the Gottman Institute, if you don't know, is the foremost leader, researcher, and scientist that have studied marriage and what makes marriage last. And he can actually predict couples that will end up in divorce. Um, so eight dates is a great way. It's a great book to get to know the person that you're dating and your relationship with, or, you know, getting to know someone or you're already in a relationship with and actually seeing how compatible you guys will be long-term. And then you go all in based on a little interest. Yeah. Your standard has to be higher than it that. It does. I know that. That's like you going out. <laughs> That's like, it's like you leaving your house and someone says, I like your house. And you go, well, here's a key. <laughs> oh my God. Like, why? Someone doesn't get a key to your house right. just because they said you have a nice house. Right. Now, I'm sorry I got to interrupt right there. I think that's bad advice because I hate this word about, I hate the phrase lowering your standards. It makes women think, well, I'll raise these standards. I'll create more on my list instead of getting healed, getting therapy, getting the work, doing the work 
to fix what is broken in me that's causing this. Raising your standards is going to do nothing but kind of put you out of your league where the men who meet those standards aren't really looking for maybe you. And this is what a lot of women are seeing and, and where you you keep, you think, well, I don't want to deal with ghost, guys who ghost me anymore. So let me keep raising my standards. So, oh, if he just tells me something nice, I'm not going to just automatically respond. That's okay, but it's like it's behavior modification. It's not true change. It won't last. And even though he may not ghost you at first, it eventually will come. That relationship won't last because you aren't really changed. You're just doing some cosmetic behavior modification and not true inner work. It's like putting on a waist trainer versus going to the gym, dieting, and exercising. Closure, I want you to hear this over and over again. Closure is overrated. Mm. Okay? Disinterest is closure. Okay. When someone ghosts you, that's the closure. Because in my life, I always, always follow the principle. I never invest in someone based on how much I like them. Mm -hmm. I invest in someone based on how much they invest in me. Oh, that's good. Okay. I'll leave you with this thought. I'll leave you with this thought. Robin says this all the time. Don't burn daylight chasing the wrong one because the right one won't run. What? Okay. <laughs> that like some, like, okay, let's just, let's just talk straight. Um, but anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think below. Also, check out my Patreon. Um, I have a lot coming over there um, besides doing weekly Q&As, live streams, AMAs, you know, ask me anything. I am also have a tier where I'm going to be doing videos and showing you guys how to grow on YouTube. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a veteran. I've been doing this for six years. Um, last month, I got 60000 subscribers and it wasn't because you know by accident <laughs> let me just put it like that there are strategies to grow and no it's not because of a cute face um if you look at the most popular youtubers most channels the the top they're not supermodels they're not gorgeous people they're not they're pretty average or sometimes below average let's be honest but somehow they're able to succeed um and that's one thing i like about youtube because you can grow passive wealth you can uh, really build your own business without any overhead and it focuses on your mind it focuses on your personality you know qualities about you not just your looks there's one reason why i'm not a fan of instagram i'm also not a fan of tiktok because it's just small snippets and there's a lot of foolishness. But over here on YouTube, I feel like you can really, um, no matter who you are and what your background is, you can find a niche and grow it um, pretty rapidly, or I would say steadily and methodically in a way where you feel in control of your growth versus just hoping the algorithm gods choose you. So anyway, make sure you guys check it out. It's Melanie King Official on Patreon, the link's below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.